Hey, it's Nathan with CrazyMarketing.com. In this video, we're gonna talk about Dynamic Creative in the Facebook or Meta Ads Manager. So what Dynamic Creative lets you do is upload several images or videos, headlines, descriptions, content, etc. And basically, Facebook will go ahead and mix and match all the stuff you upload and create different ad variations using all that content. So this image right here gives like a good example of how it works. So you upload, you know, set three image variants, two, body copy variants and then just one headline right here and then Facebook will go ahead and mix and match everything you upload and figure out which combinations work the best for getting you the results that you're trying to get. So using the dynamic creative feature can test a whole bunch of stuff for you like automatically. So we're gonna go ahead and set that up over here in ads manager. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on create to create a brand new campaign and I believe you can use dynamic creative in all the different campaign objectives but I'm just gonna go with sales for right now. I'll go ahead and click on continue. I'm gonna go ahead and select the manual sales campaign as I don't believe you can do it with the tailored campaign or advantage plus option here, but I could be mistaken. Anyway, we'll go ahead and click on continue here. And we go ahead and turn off use catalog. I've uploaded my catalog from Shopify into this account, which would let me create ads using my catalog. However, I don't wanna use that feature here. And I'm going to scroll on down here to where it says dynamic creative. So I can go ahead and flip this on. And so here's a description of how to use dynamic creative. You can now provide creative elements such as images and headlines that will be used to automatically generate variations for your audience like we already talked about. Certain variations such as automatically cropping an image or applying a carousel template depend on the creative element and placement selected. And some settings such as send a messenger are not yet available for ads using dynamic creative. Those settings will be disabled. So we'll go ahead and click on continue. And I'm not gonna adjust any other settings at the ad set level. But if you do need more information, I do have videos on campaign settings, ad set settings, as well as ad settings. So I recommend checking out those videos if you need more information on running campaigns. But we're gonna go to the ad level now. And we're gonna go through the process of setting up our dynamic ads. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect to my Facebook page. So my SEM training page. If you're gonna be advertising on Instagram, I recommend connecting your account. So that way you can get comments on your ads as well as respond to those comments on your ads. Whereas if you use your Facebook page to run ads on Instagram, you won't be able to reply to people's comments. And also nobody can go to your Instagram profile and follow your account. So if you're advertising on Instagram, you definitely wanna go ahead and set up an Instagram account. Moving on here, so we have our ad set up now. So our creative source, and we're gonna be manually uploading. And we have the format here, so we're gonna use single image or video. And I'll have another video on the carousel format. So if you're interested in that, just check out my channel. I recommend leaving this turned on, as it can increase your results. But moving down here to add creative, which is what we're focused on right here. So since we're using dynamic creative, we can upload 10 images or videos to be used in our ad. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload a couple images real quick. So let me select images. I have this one that I've already uploaded. So I have this guy holding this orange book and I'm gonna go ahead and select another one. So I'm gonna actually upload a new one. So now I have a female holding a book too. So we'll hit continue. So I'm gonna be like testing between a male holding a book and a female holding a book and see if one of those produces better or worse results. I could go ahead and upload eight more images or videos if I wanted to, but I'm gonna leave it at two for demonstration purposes. Now there's also the edit media option right here. So if I click on this, it can let me select a different size for my media. So there's the original, which is a square, then there's vertical. And so I could use this if I want to, and it's what's recommended. So we'll stick with this option and see how things play out. But then there's also a square version and a horizontal version. So you could select which one, you know, makes sense for your particular image. The horizontal one would not work for me because I'm not seeing the product here. So I'm gonna go with vertical, recommended. I'll center it up a little bit more and we'll see how this plays out. I'll go ahead and click save. Same concept here with my female image. We'll go ahead and select the vertical one and we'll center it a little bit more and we'll go ahead and save it. And then it gives us the option right here to optimize creative for each person. So vary your ad creative and destination based on each person's likelihood to respond. Since we're using dynamic creative, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this on and let Facebook's algorithm work its magic. All right, now we have options for primary text, headline, description, and website URL. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on this ad preview right now so we can kind of get an idea of how our ads are gonna be looking. 
And I can see right away that it's giving me an error message. So please select destination link for your ad. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug a URL in right here. And there we go, no more error message, but we can see that the top of my guy's head is getting cut off. And that's because I went with that tall crop instead of a square crop. And so we can see there's gonna be some issues here because I don't want the top of my guy's head cut off. But we'll move forward with the primary text. So we'll do primary text one. And you can see over here, Facebook wrote some copy for me based off of their algorithm or whatever it is. So if I click this plus button, usually it'll add it right over here, but for some reason it's not doing that right now. So I don't know if there's just a temporary glitch while I'm filming, but anyway, I often find that their pre-written text is not always the best, so it's not that big of a deal. And I could hover over it to see what it's saying anyway, and I could type it out if I want to manually. But I'm gonna go ahead and add another text option. So I'll do primary text two. And you can see over here on the right hand side where this primary text is showing up. And just so you know, you can go ahead and also put like spaces in here. So if I wanted to throw like a link to my website in the ad itself, I could go ahead and do that just like that right there. Now headline, so this would be our headline one and I'll add another headline option, headline two. And, then, and so I can see on the ad preview, my headline goes right here. And then we have description. So this would be description one and then we'll go ahead and do description two so you can see the description pops up right here and then I have my website URL right there and my display link so that's this little thing right here so I can plug in crazy marketing.com slash YouTube and it should update my display link like that or I could just leave it you know without the YouTube on there and I'll just show crazy marketing.com or if I delete it out of there it will just show crazyoutmarketing.com. And then there's an option to add a call button to your website. And this allows people to visit your ad and land on your website and your number shows up at the bottom of the screen and they can tap it to call you right from there. And I'll have another video on this call feature because it's a little out of the scope of this particular video. Up next we have call to action. So that's this button right here. So I have learned more and maybe I'll go ahead and do about order now. And scrolling on down, we have other tracking. So we wanna go ahead and make sure that we're tracking our events. So we'll do website events and make sure that I'm tracking my pixel right here. Now, if for some reason you're having issues, you can come back to the ad set level and make sure that you have your conversion set for website and your performance goal selected and your pixel right here. And you can also select your conversion event that you're optimizing for as well. So I'll select my add to cart event. So that way my ad set is optimizing for the correct conversion event for what I'm selling. So let's come back over here and let's address the elephant in the room. And that is the fact that my guy's head is halfway cut off. But we can see over here on the right hand side that there are other ads where his head is not quite cut off and it actually looks okay. So we need to try and figure out a course of action to handle this situation here. I also wanna point out that we could click on advanced preview over here. And this will show us how our ads look in all the locations. Now I could go ahead and make sure that I'm looking at the guy for example. So we have Facebook feed, it's having issues displaying correctly. Instagram looks okay, stories look okay, Facebook stories look okay, Facebook video feeds not good and so on. So I can come through here and see all the places where it looks jacked up and I could do the same thing with my other image as well so my female image and I run into the same situation as the guy basically the top of her head keeps getting cut off in my square images so I have a couple things I could go ahead and try and do I could go ahead and do a square crop and see what happens so let's come back over here and we'll edit our media and we'll go with original and save and same thing with the female here original and save and then I'm gonna to go to my advanced preview again and let's see how things look. So in this instance, things look okay. Of course, the taller ones have a border at the top and bottom instead of being like the full screen. But all the square ones now look good. So let's keep going. So she's showing up properly all across the different ads. So I could roll with the square format of my ad. And yeah, it might not look the best on the reels or on the stories, but at least everywhere else it looks good. And of course, same concept would be with the guy over here. So yeah, looks fine. It's showing up okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and click save real quick. So let's say that I do wanna stick with the vertical recommended right here and click on save. And same thing with the female here. We'll go vertical, click on save. All right, so advanced preview. So I obviously can't do Facebook feed here, Facebook video feed. And I'd go through and I'd write down all the locations where it's not going to show up well. So Facebook in-stream videos, Facebook right column, and so on. And what I would do next is go ahead and turn off those various locations. So I could get, click on save. And if we come to the ad set level, and we scroll on down here to placements. We can go ahead and change it to manual placements. 
and I would go ahead and come to feeds here, click this arrow, and we know Facebook feed, my images don't, don't look good. And Facebook video feeds, it didn't look good. Facebook right column, it didn't look good. I believe Instagram Explorer gave me an error. And we had in-stream ads for videos and reels. And I think Facebook in-stream videos didn't look good. Now, of course, if I was doing this for real, I would, I would have wrote down all the locations that did not look good instead of just trying to do it from memory. But I think you get the idea. I'm gonna go ahead and click next now. And I can come up here to advanced preview. And now I see that the square feed locations are now no longer an option. So it's only gonna show in these places where it shows up well with these exceptions right here. So I would go back to the ad set settings and remove these two options from the placements to make sure I'm not showing ads with a guy with half his head cut off. All right, so I'll go ahead and click on save. And so hopefully you can understand what I'm trying to explain here with the images and the cropping and all that type of stuff. Basically, you wanna make sure your images look good on all the different locations. And this is kind of where the dynamic creative has its limitations. Like if you watch my ads video, you would see that you could customize the crop or even change out the image for every single placement that's available. So you can essentially make custom ads for each individual location. However, you can't do as much testing with the regular ad creation process versus the dynamic creative process. So the dynamic creative process lets you split test 10 images and videos, while the regular way to create ads does not let you do that. But you have more control over what shows in each placement. And if you haven't watched my ads video yet, definitely watch that too. So you can see the difference between dynamic creative and the regular way to create ads. And of course, once you're happy with everything, you would come down here and click on publish. And once your ad's been running for a little bit and you wanna see which dynamic elements are performing the best, like which image or headline or whatever, you could come to your ad and you would go ahead and just select it. And then you'd come over to the breakdown reports right here. And if you scroll down, you see by dynamic creative element. And then you could select by image video and slideshow or text or headline or description or call to action or website URL. And then it would give you the conversions and information for each of the different elements that you have. Now I don't have any actively running, so there's no data to show here, but this is where you would go in order to see that data. And then you could see which image or which text or which headline seems to be performing the best. Now, even though you get that information, I probably wouldn't use it to adjust anything. Like I wouldn't go into my ad and delete a headline if it doesn't seem to be performing well because Facebook's algorithm is already going to be optimizing your ads and selecting the best stuff that gets you the best results already. So if you go in there and you start tweaking things, you could throw off the algorithm and it could take a few days to reset. So when you go in here and you figure out which elements are performing the best, just take like a note of it. You can use it for new creative later down the road, but I wouldn't manually go and tweak anything based off of what you see in these breakdown reports. And so that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, I appreciate any sorts of likes, comments, subscribes, and or check out crazymarketing.com. And I hope you have a great rest of the day.